Hello, everybody, and good afternoon. I'd like to welcome everybody to today's webinar. Today's webinar is entitled Online Gambling and the Promise of Incremental Ad Revenue. My name is Patrick Buno. I'm a marketing manager with BI Advisory Services, and I'll be running the webinar for you today. So before we get started, we're just going to give everyone else a few more minutes to log on and get settled. So while they're doing that, I'm just going to run through a few housekeeping items very quickly with everybody. I'm going to start off by reminding everybody that we are recording today's webinar. So all registered attendees will be receiving an email from BIA with links to the on-demand version of the webinar, as well as a PDF of the slide deck. So be looking out for that email from us probably sometime early tomorrow morning. If at any time during today's webinar you experience any difficulties, please just email us at webinars at BIA.com. We have some staff that is standing by that can try to assist you and help get you online. And then finally, we just like to encourage everyone to be interactive in today's webinar with us. We like to encourage you to ask questions. If at any time you have a question you'd like to ask, please just go ahead and type it in on the questions box on your GoToWebinar panel. And we'll try to get your questions today. And if we don't have time, we'll follow up with you afterwards. And we also have a poll we're going to do at some point during today's webinar. So if you just want to quickly log on and participate, we really encourage that. And also afterwards, we have a quick follow-up survey. We really appreciate your feedback on today's webinar. So. Any way you guys can participate and help out would be a good help and we'll make it for a great webinar. So with that, I think we're going to get things started here. I'm going to hand things off to the Managing Director of BI Advisory Service to kick things off, Rick Ducey. Rick, take it away. Pat, Patrick, thank you so much. And thank you everyone for joining us today. We're so happy to have you with us for this um, webinar on a really compelling topic. It's been growing cr pretty quickly lately based on some legal changes in, in different states and people's behavioral changes and media changes. So online gambling um, is rolling out state by state in the country and there's a lot of advertising opportunities with that. Uh, so we've heard some people compare online gambling advertising as, as a really nice add-on, a little pocket of growth that maybe compares hopefully to as much as what political advertising uh, might boost local ad spending uh, by, uh, but it's every year, not just in, in even year. So it's, it's pretty nice. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us. Um, here's our uh, agenda for today. We're gonna define what we mean by online gambling. We'll give an overview of what it's like state by state, how things are rolling out. Um, we'll talk about the media mix and particularly the importance of TV advertising as a media platform for online gambling activity. Uh, we'll summarize some of the activity around gambling. We'll talk about sports betters insights. Um, we'll give a forecast of what the ad spend looks like from BIA's um, analysis for 21 uh, to 24, uh, and we'll look at online gambling advertising from the buy side, and then we'll have a little roundtable discussion to um, um, conclude the uh, presentation. As Patrick mentioned, we're recording this. Uh, there's also a chat box for questions. Uh, I will monitor that, and if we have time, we'll get to those questions uh, as we move to the webinar. <clears throat> Let me just briefly um, introduce our speakers. We have Justin Laporte, who's the Vice President of Local Audience Insight for Nielsen. Uh, Justin is responsible for a team that provides proactive media insights and thought leadership to Nielsen local media clients in the U.S. Um, Nielsen, uh, Justin seems to work both with internal and external clients, works with product leadership, data science, and technology operations. So he's deeply immersed in the data, but really pulling insights from all of that data, which is going to be very helpful for this webinar. I think you'll see very shortly. Um, Welcome um, today, Justin, good to have you with us. And then Heather uh, Gundry is the Senior Vice President um, and Group Director of Local Investment Media at uh, Dentsu. Uh, Heather has had a, a broad career managing local broadcast investment particularly, uh, buying for automotive, telecom, retail, travel, tourism, beverages, and now we're into sports betting. Um, Heather, from her perspective, really brings a lot of focus to process, procedure, and partnerships while working to produce excellent results that we want to see on behalf of clients. Uh, before joining Dentsu, uh, just in 2018, Heather was on the Global Blue team for Ford dealer and national business, overseeing all local TV, radio, cable, and digital, uh, and uh, managing a team of 65 people across 10 offices. And then Mark Fratrick is BIA's um, chief economist and senior vice president. 
Um, Mark's responsible for our forecasting and data programs. You'll hear Mark speak to the uh, online gambling advertising forecast in a bit. Um, Mark manages the company's numerous proprietary databases, uh, conducts proprietary research on various trends, and then Mark and I uh, work together a lot in our strategic um, advisory uh, consulting services area. So that is the agenda. That's the speaker lineup. And let me turn this right over to you, Mark. Thank you, Rick, and welcome, everybody. Next slide, please, Patrick. Thank you. One quick thing we want to define uh, here is what BIA views as local is all um, advertising revenues, um, advertising by, by national, regional, and local buyers on local media outlets, whether it's local TV, local cable, or online or mobile that is targeted. And as many people on this uh, webinar know, as Vantage clients, we forecast and analyze all 210 television markets and all radio markets. Next slide, please. So what do we mean by online gambling? Um, these are the new services given the um, uh, Supreme Court case a few years ago that did legalize sports betting throughout the United States, um, where the states determine whether or not it's legal. And that's a big uh, part of our estimate. Uh, but these are services that provide residents of the states while they're in the state the ability to bet on sports or other gambling mostly sports while in that state. So the, um, uh, the services of FanDuel, DraftKings, William Hill, and the others on that list are all ones that allow gambling if you are actually physically located at the, in that state. Now, not all of those lists of companies are available in all betting states. Some are, many of them, are, most of them. Um, some, there are some states that actually have state-owned uh, operations. One thing that we're not looking at is casino advertising. That's a whole separate vertical that obviously allows sports betting at the casinos in the legal state, but that's not part of the vertical we're looking at right now. Next slide, please. So what's the present situation? Well, there are uh, many different colors here. There are some that are possible, some that are may never happen. And this, this changes all the time. And in fact, this map is a little outdated because the Commonwealth of Virginia is said pending, but it actually became legal in the middle of January. So there are lots of states, there are 10 states that you can uh, do it online um, um, from as long as you're located within the boundaries of that state. And there are others that are coming online soon, like Arizona was one where the legislature just passed it, the governor signed the bill, and it's waiting for implementation probably in the uh, third quarter of this year. Um, so we're, we're using this um, estimate that I'll go into later about um, our estimates of the total amount of advertising being spent on local advertising platforms, and it's an incredible amount in some of these states. Um, and Justin will go into a little bit in detail. Um, but there are other possibilities uh, moving forward, like Maryland, I know, will be available either um, late this year or early next year, and the same holds for New York State. Even though they're advertising in New York City, you can't do online gambling within the confines of New York State but um, there's still a lot of advertising being spent in New York City uh, marketplace. But we expect that either by the end of this year or early 2022, you will be able to do online gambling in, within the confines completely of New York State. Next slide, please. Given all this activity, TVB uh, sponsored a great um, survey of betters um, in early Jan in January 2021, asking about the various um, um, very advertising platforms that they uh, saw um, advertisements for online gambling, as well as the credibility of those advertising platforms and the messages that they uh, um, that they portray. I encourage you, if you are a TVB member, to go get the full study. But the one thing that I want to point out that the next slide is the different advertising platforms that um, that the sports betters um, had access. And so the question that was included in that, um, in that query in the past two months, did you see or hear or read an advertisement 
from any online or casino sports branding in any of these media. And obviously TV was the largest um, um, advertising platform that is um, that was cited. And you can see radio also is very big. I know in a lot of sports stations, sports formatted stations, it's a very prominent um, new vertical. And you can see all the various digital and um, online activities um, and advertising platforms that all the betters um, cited. And this isn't surprising to me insofar as television being the predominant one, because obviously this is a uh, new product, new service. And one of the things that um, TV does well along with cable is to um, is to provide a brand awareness and reaching so many people with local television and ne network television and network cable and local sports um, on cable is a great way of increasing the brand awareness of these online gambling sites. So before I turn it over, next slide please. Before I turn it over to uh, to Justin, I'm, we're going to have a poll. The poll being how important is online gambling to your 2021 plan? One being not at all important and five being very important. So at this point in time, um, please select um, one, one of them and we'll uh, publish, give you the results uh, pretty soon. And in the meantime, I will tell you that um, at the end of um, um, the presentation, I will be talking about the estimates of um, the advertising revenue and what I <clears throat> what I use to generate those estimates is a lot of the good information that Justin will be talking about next um, about from their Nielsen and Intel as well as our um, our BIA estimates of local advertising revenues in those television markets. So. Um, I'm um, waiting to uh, get the answers for the. Uh, look what we see. We see five, uh, 30, uh, two out of two out of every five nearly uh, say uh, it's very it's very important, um, and uh, another 13 percent somewhat important. And you can see the going down. I suspect the, the people who selected one or possibly two are in the states where online gambling isn't allowed, but that's uh, over over half the people say it's very important or it's somewhat important. And when that results, I'm going to turn it over to you, Justin, to uh, talk about some of the Nielsen and Detail information. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mark. And I'm just really excited to be here. Excellent panel today. Excellent topic of discussion. And really, we, we've got some fantastic data to share with you all and, and hopefully to help those that are planning on making this a really big part of their uh, media buys moving forward. Um, so I've got two different sections. Uh, the first one, though, we're going to focus on here is specific to online gambling and where are the dollars, right? What, where are they placed? Um, not just... Uh, from a market perspective, but in what types of programs, and also what are the dollars? What is the growth been? And that's a really, really important part of this, this excellent product category that we've decided to highlight today. So if we move to the next slide, where I wanted to start uh, using Ad Intel data. So, so Nielsen Ad Intel gives information about advertising across pretty much all mediums. And obviously the focus today is online gambling. And that is a product category that has grown a lot over time. I'll talk about that in a minute. But first, thinking about all of the dollars that are currently spent in this online camp gambling product category, uh, the vast, vast majority is spent in local spot TV. And you know, while the number is is really big, and that's maybe the surprising thing. What's not surprising is that it is mostly in local spot TV. Almost 80% of online gambling advertising is on local spot TV. It makes sense, right? As, as Mark talked about, thinking about states that are legalizing, it's not everywhere, right? And, and market by market, DMA by DMA, um, we would expect that online gambling is going to be spent on local TV, not just because of the legalization part, but, you know, TV is, has always been just a great place to, to get people um, to understand about certain brands, as Mark said, but also 
really good resonance when it comes to TV uh, and specifically local TV uh, and great opportunity there obviously to get it into um, all different types of programming. Other categories, other mediums where online gambling dollars are spent, national digital, that's just kind of digital in general across uh, the full US. Um, uh, the others that you sort of see are smaller but are, are, are also I think growing network TV that's broadcast network TV. We've got outdoor at um, $5.6 million, local radio, $3.8 million. You've got na national cable TV, then network radio, local newspaper, and Spanish language cable TV rounded out. Um, but again, that, that number almost $154 million in Q1 of 2021 in terms of the amount of money spent on online gambling is pretty amazing. One thing not pictured here is local spot cable. Uh, however, we will get some really great information from Mark later on on that category. We know that's another big important part of online gambling spend, uh, and he'll talk a little bit about the future look of, of local spot cable. All right, if we move to the next slide, though, what I wanted to talk about first was um, the growth, right? And going back a few few years, quarter by quarter, what we've got here is the total dollar spent on online gambling quarter by quarter, back to Q1 of 2019, all the way forward to Q1 of 2021, uh, specifically local spot TV ad dollars. And you know, back Q1 of 2019, it was a modest, just under $11 million in total ad spend across local spot TV. That remained pretty stable. It went down a bit, but then came back a bit at the end of 2019. Went up a little in Q1 of 2020, upwards of uh, just about, just a little bit more than $13 million. And then all of a sudden, Q3, Q4 of 2020, we see huge growth into Q1 of 2021, up up to that $154 million number. And again, that, 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 all, that ultimately goes back to the legalization and that happening at a faster rate. Um, and, and that's something that we're going to continue to monitor as, as this, this moves forward. The other thing we, look, we looked at on the right side here that just popped up is what is the share of this particular product category in terms of all local spot TV dollars that are spent of all product categories, right? So we, we took a look at the percent that online gambling makes up in total. And again, you go back to early 2019, it, it was barely two tenths of a percent of all dollars. Now you move forward to Q1 of 2021, and it's just fascinating that that's jumped up to 2%. And 2% may not sound like a big number, but if we move ahead to the next slide, you'll see that it really is an absolutely fascinating number. That 2% puts online gambling almost in the top 10 categories, uh, product categories for local spot TV ad dollar spending, right, in, in Q1 of 2021. And that's out of more than 1,200 product categories that we measure in Ad Intel. So that's really just a fantastic number. You know, it puts it in the same conversation as the big, big product categories that everybody knows about, like legal services, auto, different consumer products like furniture and restaurant quick serve. So I expect to see that break the top 10 soon. Um, looking, you know, into quarter two of 2021, and, and again, Mark, I think will give you some really great insights on where that that number is going to move. Um, but that's just a, a, an amazing story for the online gambling category. So the next thing we wanted to look at on, on the next slide, and for a few slides, is what is online gambling, local spot TV advertising spend look like market by market? So what we did here was we, we took a map of the U.S. We're sharing from a visualization perspective state lines, right? So you see state lines. But what we did was we, we took individual market ad dollars and then we sort of shared it out by market across all markets, the total 154 million of online gambling spend. And we wanted to sort of highlight within each state, um, you know, based on the market totals for, for the share what the top shares were by state, right? And of course you see the big markets where there's it, it, some either gambling legalized within the state directly or within some of the bordering states of those markets, New York being the top market um, that is in right near states that have legalized gambling. Um, you know, New York obviously coming soon, we, we, we hope and think, um, but then you've got 
states like Pennsylvania and Michigan and Illinois standing out. You've got the biggest markets, New York, Philly, Detroit, Chicago there. Um, but even some of the, the purple states where we know that there's some legalized gambling and some not, Missouri gambling's not legal, but we see Missouri stand out here. You've got markets within Missouri that again, cross into Iowa, cross into Illinois and people can gamble. So there's there's value for spending money uh, on local spot TV in those markets that, that cross states. So moving forward to the next slide and digging a little bit deeper into markets, now looking at sort of a, a, a sort of a point in time back in Q1 of 2019 versus Q1 of 2021, we, we took a look at sort of the top markets for online gambling spend from a dollar's perspective, right? So, and again, still staying with the local spot TV um, medium. And again, it, it, just from a comparison perspective, we really only see two markets show any comparison from Q1 of 2019 versus Q1 of 2021, that's New York and Philly. So even though we've seen tremendous growth in those two markets, we, there, was some, there were some significant dollars um, in New York and Philly back in Q1 of 2019, more than 5 million for New York and just under 5 million for Philly. But again, th those have jumped to, to almost 25 million, more than 20 million respectively. And you look at those top markets that sort of round out the top five, six, but then you look to the end of this particular chart, which again, we're only looking at some of the top markets, not all markets here that online gambling has money currently. Uh, and you see smaller markets like Flint, and Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, Traverse City, Harrisburg, Grand Rapids, uh, big online gambling dollars in, the, in those you know, smaller markets, those medium-sized markets where, um, again, legalization has occurred and, and we're seeing really, really good ad spend happening already in Q1 of 2021. All right, moving along, a, a couple more topics that I wanted to take you through from an ad spend perspective. First, and I teased this up a little bit earlier, where are local spot TV online gambling dollars placed, right? And, and that's that that's a big question and, and something that I think was on all of our minds as we were we were pulling this data together and looking at it. We wanted to understand over time, where is that money being placed and, and where could that money be placed uh, in a future state? So uh, we took a look at three points in time, Q1 of 2020, Q4 of 2020, and Q1 of 2021. And we took a look at all the top program genres where online gambling dollars are placed. Um, and it's not sports, right? So I, I think maybe your initial thought would be, well, it's probably in sports programming. And that, and that is the case there is there are dollars placed in sports programming and, and you can see if you just if we actually start with that second category there that sports program genre category you know the, the share of of all program genre where dollars are placed is higher in that q4 time of year where you've got a lot more sports programming nfl and college football in q4 of 2020 was different than other years right where you had um the other major sports, NHL, NBA, with their finals and MLB playoffs as well, uh, the World Series. So there's a lot of sports programming there, but really what takes the cake here is, is news, right? News is, is where we're seeing the majority of online gambling being placed, um, upwards of almost 40% in Q1 of 2021. Other categories, other program genres that stand out, variety, audience participation and talk, that's actually growing over time. So uh, that, that's a helpful trend to see that we're seeing more dollars placed there. And then your, your typical entertainment, drama and comedy program genres that sort of ebbs and flows depending on time of year and then other. So, but but again, news really stood out and I think that's, that's important. I think that's a place where there's a lot more ad inventory in the first place that local stations have control of. Um, and that's a great place to find, in, in many cases, an affluent audience, an audience that, that really does mesh well with online gambling. Finally, to round out this section, talking about online gambling ad spend, we took a look at the top brands uh, that, were, that are spending in the online gambling product category on local spot tv and you know i don't think really any big surprise that you know that FanDuel and DraftKings are right at the top of the board here and make up you know well over uh, 60 percent of all of the online gambling dollars but if you just take the top three brands 
all the FanDuel combined with DraftKings and then BetMGM online, that makes up 82% of all of the online gambling dollars. And again, I, I think those are the three that, that stand out that have been, I think, the most active, have been around for a long time and have been really building building their brands up over time but as we as we see the overall money increase over time i think that we'll see other brands make their way in and that of course is going to be very dependent on legalization by state um, and how more states come come along over time um, but really the top brands um, make up in total almost 100 percent. so so it's really a small list of brands that make up online gambling right now all right, if we move to the next slide, I've got one more section I, I wanted to take everyone through, and, and I wanted to give everyone an idea of, of the profile of a sports better. And, and we pulled some really excellent data out of our Scarborough product, just a, a fascinating product that gives us the ability to track consumer media behavior, consumer buying behavior across all of our, our local TV markets. And the, the, the first thing to talk about here just from a very simple perspective, is that general profile. But first, let me tell you about the different types of betters that we're able to pull out of Scarborough and that we were able to kind of profile here. So you've got on the left side, what we sort of labeled as the traditional sports better, right? So uh, that's gonna be anyone betting at a casino, uh, sports betting at a casino specifically, and making a cash wager on a sports event. So that's sort of your typical traditional sports better. And then on the right side, we took a look at what we would call the new online sports better, right? So that's your played daily fantasy sports online or played other online or organized fantasy sports, right? So th there definitely is a difference between the two because if you sort of focus on the right side, the new online sports better, and you sort of start to, to read across the different rows, the new online sports better tends to be younger, right? The average age is in the 30s, not the 40s, like the traditional sports better. Um, just slightly higher male. It's already a, a highly male dominated segment um, in both sides, but it is a little bit more male than new online sports better compared to traditional. And uh, income in total, there are more people uh, that play daily fantasy um, than, for example, sports betting at a casino. But if, if you add the two together, there are more people overall and there's more income there, right? Uh, you'll see that the average income is actually the highest among people that uh, played other online and organized fantasy sports. And, and, and that's a really interesting insight. And this is all available across all markets in, in our Scarborough product. So this is, gives kind of a high level idea of the sports better profile um, from a, a national sort of total US perspective, but this is all possible to look at market by market. Which, which takes me to the next slide where we actually did uh, take a look at sort of a, a next, a different level of information from a, from a total US perspective. Uh, and, and we wanted to sort of get an idea of the indices of what sports bettors are watching, right? Broadcast cable and, and how that compares to sort of typical people, just anyone who watches broadcasting cable. So if we focus just on the left side for a second, what those are are indexes that basically take a look at the four, four different categories that I talked about earlier, sports betting at a casino, place to cash wager on a sports bet, uh, and then the two online categories. Uh, and then we are basically, a quick hi to how to read what we're doing, if we look at the far right side, so we look at any basic cable for the play daily fantasy sports online. So what that's saying is adults that play daily fantasy sports online are 19% more likely to watch cable than the average person who watches cable. Uh, and same thing with broadcast, they're 3% more likely to watch broadcast. So in all cases, all of these different sports better types over index to sort of the national uh, adult 18 plus population. And, and that's, a, that's a really interesting stat. The, the other thing that we took a look at on the right side are what are the top programs that are viewed by sports bettors in general, right? So sports programming, no big surprise that, that gravitates to the top of the list right away. Uh, but you also see movies and comedies really high, really close to sports. And then local news, that, that's a really great standout category from a, a programming perspective. As we saw from a placement perspective, that's where a lot of this money is being placed. Uh, so 53% of sports bettors are, are reached by local news, are, are watching.
watch are watching local news. Um, and the documentaries rounds out the, the top program categories. So one last thing I wanted to take everybody through, if we go to the last slide, is we took a look at two specific markets. Number one, the New York market, which actually touches multiple states. And then also the Rochester, Mason City, Austin market, which also touches multiple states, specifically Minnesota and Iowa. But looking at the left side, starting with the New York market, what we did was we wanted to take a look at where do sports bettors live? Uh, in the different categories, right? So we've got the four categories here in New York. Um, approximately 50% of sports bettors live in the New York state, right? New York counties that make up the New York market. Now, sports betting isn't legal in New York yet. Uh, it's moving that way, but it's not completely legal. So it's likely because it, it, you're close to, to other states that have legalized gamble that, that people can cross state lines and do that. So uh, we see the same thing happening in the Rochester, Mason City, Austin market, where you've got the majority of people that are sports bettors live in Minnesota counties where sports betting isn't, isn't legal yet, but it's legal in Iowa. Right, so um, what this all tells me is that, what this should tell us, I, I think, in the industry of media, uh, and specifically local spot TV, is you need to advertise to everyone in a market, regardless of legalization at this point, right? Because especially with those markets where they touch other markets where it's legalized, you wanna try to hit everybody because there are people that are, are looking to, to be able to do that behavior of sports online gambling. Um, if they can get to a, a, another state quickly and easily. All right, so that, that rounds out my section. I'm gonna pass it back over to Mark, who's, who's gonna talk a little bit about the future state. Thank you, Justin. That was great information. Um, really rounds out um, our analysis of, of the states as well as the dollar amount, which I'm now gonna turn to. Um, it was very interesting. I found about the multiple states, and I also found the um, the, the program genre really interesting data. So um, with all those um, states that are legal, the various DMAs that uh, we see it, what is the total amount that being we expect to happen in 2021? Well, here are our estimates based on three different scenarios: the existing states, the ones that are um, have legalized betting. Um, we estimate that for all of 2021, it'll be over $445 million being spent. And that will continue to grow in those states up to uh, about $535 million by 2024. Um, the, the line above that, the likely states added um, in 2022 are going to be, as I mentioned earlier, Maryland and probably New York State, and that'll give a nice big job to be uh, over nearly 571 million, and then uh, uh, 581 point uh, in 2023. The optimistic scenario where that line really jumps up is whether or not some other large states are uh, come online, come uh, possible there. And what I mean specifically is Massachusetts and California, uh, both uh, states have legislation pending and depending upon the political power and the various uh, aspects of it, um, we, if, if those states came on, we, we would see nearly over $800 million being spent in 2024 on online gambling, which will obviously be another good political year. So there's gonna be a lot of activity if this happens in 2024. Now, this is over-the-air advertising, and obviously everybody on the call recognizes that they compete, and I showed the TBB um, slide earlier of the various other advertising platforms um, better recall. So we went and estimated using our analysis already of the various advertising platforms. Next slide, please. Um, total amount of being advertised. And so here at BIA, the estimate nationwide of over a billion dollars being spent in local markets, targeting local consumers by online gambling, uh, by the various platforms. You can see TV gets slightly less than um, half, of about 44%. Radio over the air is a strong um, um, player in this in this particular market at over 11%. In part, there's a lot of formatted stations really targeted. 
Um, Justin mentioned uh, cable before. Uh, cable should get over seven and nearly seven and a half percent of the total amount being spent. Um, don't forget about direct mail. Direct mail has the advantage that you can actually target the residents of legal states. And mobile and online are, um, are, are significant, lower than other types of vertical, but I suspect over time that that percentage will grow as the brand awareness um, can, uh, will uh, be more prominent and the online gambling will want to target their advertising. But as you can see, both TV and radio do participate in the online, the TV OTT services obviously has the benefit of quality programming while also targeting. Uh, but it, uh, we see this as being a tremendous market and should continue to grow uh, depending upon what states become legal. Um, but it should be a very significant uh, New vertical that was that Justin pointed out earlier was next to nothing just a, sh a short year ago. So it's an this amazing gro growth had been enjoyed by a lot of uh, television and other advertising platforms. Went out political advertising in 2021, and we could see, continue uh, to see it grow. Just for all the people who are on the webinar that are BIA advances client. We're going to be sending out the estimate for every local television market um, in advantage over the next two over the next day or so. With that, I'm going to uh, turn it over to Rick, who's going to talk with Heather. Mark, thank you so much, um, and Justin. Really interesting data and insights around what's going on with uh, this part of the market, this segment. So, Heather. Um, we're curious to know what your perspective is on this whole category. What's the competitive landscape look like? Um, how do you measure the success for your clients as you're operating in this space? Yeah, you know, I would love to say that the category is similar to several other ones that all of us have worked on over the last several decades, but it absolutely stands out and, and it's an exciting time. I mean, it definitely has seen its share of growth as we saw previously from a number of slides. And it's great to see how much it's going to still evolve over the course of the next several years. And it's not like the, the days when the buy sell side really went about looking at efficiencies only or getting the most bang or the most number of eyeballs for our dollars. It's really about finding that consumer or finding that sports consumer or gambling consumer that we can put our ads in front of. So it's a lot about data now. It's a lot about breaking through that clutter. I think we all probably saw what happened in Michigan when almost every online gambling client was active in all of the markets, um, not only in Detroit, but in the Traverse City, Lansing areas. And it really was breaking through that clutter. It reminds me a lot of, you know, political and what happens with political. You know, at the end of the day, it's exciting. I mean, it is great to see how fast paced it is. It's definitely new rules that we constantly need to be aware of, new legislation. It's new, you know, rate cards now that stations have specifically for online gambling. Um, and our targeting from all the clients is, is more than likely a little bit different, but at the end of the day, we're still going after that same consumer. Um, I would also say that from a competitive landscape, I, I know you heard from Justin earlier, and he broke out where all the advertisers are doing with their spending. And you've probably already seen that that's evolved over the course of the last you know, year itself. It really depends on the market and what the rules are and what the state rules are. And that's constantly changing and constantly good things are happening. But we need to make sure that we're breaking through and being smart about how we're placing those dollars and making sure that we're thinking outside the box and we're really trying to break through everything that's on the air right now. Um, I, from a success, measuring success, um, there's several things that we look at. Most would tell you that it's all about first time depositors or how many times they download the app or how many people download the app. But at the end of the day, it also has to do with brand awareness. We need to make sure that each of our brands are out there and they're in front of the people that we need to get it in front of. And we increase because we're there's only so many places that those consumers are going to 
tie into from the very get-go. And we wanna do that as soon as possible because we've looked at all the research and we can see where the changes are from a consumer standpoint. So we, we know what our task is, we know what our passion is, and at the end of the day, there's just so much going on in this, this category. It is really um, the wave of the future, I would say. Yeah, sure sounds like it. And then um, just a follow-up question. One of the questions that came in um, from one of our audience members uh, deals with one of the things you just mentioned about restrictions on, on ad spending and how that varies. Um, how, how big of an issue is that? I mean, as you go from state to state, jurisdiction to jurisdiction, it seems like it's a lot for you to keep track of to try to plan and activate campaigns, trying to um, you know, be in compliance with all of these rules in the different jurisdictions. Is that a big deal? Yeah, you know, it's not a big deal. It definitely takes a lot of process and procedure that goes into it. We work very closely with our clients and to know what is happening and what is bound to happen. And we obviously keep our eyes on the news and we know what's going on in the industry in general. Um, we have to be very careful when we're going to market to make sure that kind of all our T's are crossed and our I's are dotted and we're not reaching into another state that is not legalized. We also have to make sure that there's certain programming that we can and cannot be involved in. And, and station groups and stations themselves are very in tune to what's going on in their specific state. So there's a lot of dialogue that goes along with that as well. Uh, it, it is something that we constantly have to do last minute as far as going to market because there's only so much time that we're alerted that it's going live versus when we really want to get that message in front of the audience. Um, sometimes we have the creative ready that is coming soon, so to speak. Other times we want to have that live actual call to action spot. So there are things that you will see probably from all in this category where it is somewhat last minute or may seem like last minute. But honestly, there is a method to that madness. And um, I don't know if that will change. I don't know if going forward, we'll have a lot more lead time than we have in the past. All right. Keeps you on your toes, I guess. It does. Uh, it does. Another, another area that uh, I'm curious about is obviously these sports are seasonal. And the numbers we were looking at were, were sort of annual. Uh, but from your perspective, working with clients and, and placing um campaigns into certain sports that, that vary across the year how, how does that factor into your campaign planning uh, looking at the different kinds of sports uh, and hopefully the sports seasons will be longer this year than they were in 2020 um, with the pandemic but you know uh, major league B baseball uh, nfl and some of these sports uh, seasons uh, you know overlap each other uh, except for during 2020 but uh, how does that factor into your planning yeah, you know, I think the page that Justin showed a little bit earlier about where the online gambler is watching or where the spots are running um, really speaks volumes. Of course, you know, we want to be in those sports events, um, March Madness, uh, NBA, NHL, et cetera. Uh, there are, of course, rules and regulations that go along with that. Uh, but what we have found is that in following that consumer, it really does show that they may be placing their bets a little earlier than the actual event itself. So we really wanna capitalize on that programming of where it's actually at. Um, seasonality of sports, I mean, that's, everything changed last year with COVID and a lot of the teams kind of moved everything around and we, we are following them just like we follow the consumer and to what they're watching. So they kind of go hand in hand. Uh, I think that I mentioned earlier breaking through the clutter and strategies and all of that. And I think that's really what it boils down to when it gets to sports. So um, we know that that male demo of 25 or excuse me, 35 to 44 year olds, the ones that are actually making the online gambling, you know, what their preference is and into what sports it is. It's just we do come across some situations where we ca we cannot lock into it. Um, competitive wise or just category wise. Right. So this next topic I want to get into, media mix, is something where we've been receiving a lot of questions from people. We see those big numbers for, for um, local spot TV and digital. And Mark, you're talking about um, your anticipated uh, growth in, in the digital categories, uh, mobile and online. Um, 
but we've got people um, on this webinar, Heather, that are uh, from Spot TV, of course, but also from some of the other media. And they're wondering how competitive can radio be, for example, or or somebody else trying to break into this uh, media mix that uh, you've been working on with your clients. Yeah, I, I mean, at the end of the day, Spot Television, for various reasons, has seen the majority of the weight from this category being placed within it. And I, I know this word is overused a lot, but it really boils down to data driven and we need to make sure that we are following that consumer. And if they are shown to be watching television, which is the mass medium, then that's where we need to put our spots. However, that doesn't preclude anything from radio, which there are several clients that use radio as well um, in this category. And it has proven to be very, very effective. Um, not only from a spots and dots standpoint, but there is a lot of capabilities from radio that they're able to give us with endorsements and with also tie-ins to local events and really tying into the local, local communities. So their radio, I think, will continue to see a little bit of a surge with this category. Um, I also think there's some out of the box medium, not the traditional ones that other advertisers, including um, this category and other ones are starting to take advantage of out of home and um, the the podcasts that are now becoming more and more listened to. And I think at the end of the day, digital has really proven to be very uh, positive for a number of clients and the results that we're getting from that. Um, it, it doesn't hurt to be able to download an app directly off the phone that you happen to be listening to or watching to some of your digital partners. So that has proven to be something very beneficial to us moving forward. But um, at the end of the day, it's really just everyone trying to follow that consumer and to be where that consumer is either consuming television, consuming cable, consuming out of home or consuming radio. It's wherever that person can be. And you will more than likely see a little bit of shift from that. But I mean, Spot TV, it's got my heart in it. That's usually where a lot of our dollars are going to be going to because it is the mass media and we can get the majority of the people at that time. Right. Now, one thing uh, there's been a growth of uh, regional sports network activity, um, some ownership uh, activity and rebranding activity. So that part of, uh, of Spot TV and uh, that also brings in some digital and some other media mix too. But generally that notion of regional sports networks and of course that category, the media category side um, had a tough 2020 when, when you know, short seasons got shortened and, and games got cut out and everything. But how, how do you think about uh, RSNs as, as um, a media segment for making investments for your clients? No, I think RSNs are a great partner and they continue to be a great partner in reaching the audience. Um, I think some of the problems that could come up is regarding uh, networks that cross state lines, so to speak. Uh, but keep in mind, not every KPI is based on who is signing up. It's also about the brand awareness. And as some of these online gamblers get bigger and go into more states and even you know larger than that, I think you will see a lot more going towards brand awareness as a KPI. And um, that's one of the things that I think we need to be aware of. With the regional sports networks, it also is a good way to get in the door when we might be shut out of some national deals that are in any of the um, seasons. So for example, NBA, NHL, NFL, et cetera, you know, sometimes advertisers in this category are shut out and it's a light, an easier way to kind of get in if it's still available. So that's one of the things that I think all advertisers in this category are looking for. I also think from a local standpoint, not just the regional sports networks, so the individual stations, there's a lot of opportunities that way. And um, the biggest benefit to us buying locally is the fact that we can really geo-target. So that helps as well. Right, yeah, geo-targeting is such a strength on the digital side, whatever the linear media can do to, to compete or complement that offer, seems like it makes a lot of sense, uh, particularly in this segment as, as well as several other um, client segments. So, but I wanna pick up on that last point of um, the, the media side and what they can do to set themselves apart. So we're just chatting a bit about um, how radio or other media segments uh, could become more competitive for that local TV spot spend. 
Um, what, are, what are your most successful media partners look like? And some of the questions coming in, I mean, suggested it's, it's inventory, um, spot inventory you're looking at uh, in local, but maybe some other things, uh, partnerships or other kinds of promotions. How does, um, I mean, for, for a media client that you're working with or a media uh, company you're working with um, to activate your client campaigns, uh, um, not everybody's equal. How do you decide who's more equal? I believe at the end of the day, we're really looking for the partnership that you mentioned. And those are the stations that actually know not only our clients, but they know the entire industry. They know, and when I say industry, I'm talking online gambling. They have the an insight into what our clients are looking for. I mean, who those consumers are and they can provide those consumers to us. It is really about a partner that can help us break through the clutter. They have the same passion that we have. They can provide data back to us. So again, it's not just about the spots and dots, but what else can you provide to us that will encourage our strategy to go more towards whether it be spot television or digital or radio, but the data is very, very important to us. We have our own data that we like to mirror up or match up with stations data and really get that message out there. Um, it, and, and really it is about that partnership and knowing the client and knowing what our strategy is, but more importantly, knowing how to get those customers. Yes, yes, of course. Now, another question has come in, I'm kind of curious about this myself, um, for the creative uh, part of this, are there, how does how does the station personality sports reporters sports um um personalities factor into did they ever get involved with the creative to to do that kind of crossover promotion yeah I, i'm sure that several of you have seen that already with a number of different online gamblers um getting some sort of endorsement some way or another i think that radio has proven to be very instrumental in that i think you'll start seeing that with podcast and this is just in the category in general um, from a television standpoint um, with the newscasters and whatnot, it is always beneficial to us to have someone that can be one of our ambassadors and talk directly about the client, uh, not necessarily um, about the, the state itself, but just about the category. So that's always important to us. I think a number of this category, um, the clients themselves always look for that right brand ambassador, whether that they're gonna use locally or that they're gonna use nationally. So I think that's something that really is helpful to us and really does go a long way and, and really creating uh, programming or even sponsorships or partnerships that is something our clients can own and it can be about them in putting their message out there. So it's not necessarily just about the commercial itself, but creating content within all of the stations that really ties back to the clients. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, definitely see the value there. Um, there are two more questions I wanna give a little time to here. And then we have a lot of questions, very interactive group. Thank you very much audience for all the participation with the questions. Um, we're not gonna be able to get to them all um, live in this sessions, but we will share the questions with all of the presenters and, and summarize those and get those out by email. Um, one of the two remaining questions I just wanna to touch on, I will handle, um, which is, will we get a copy of the deck? And for those of you who missed uh, the front part of the webinar, yes. Um, everybody who registered will get um, uh, information about how to get the deck and how to get this session on demand. If you miss part of it, want to see the rest of it, or if you want to share it with a colleague, um, certainly can do that. And the other question um, that came up is, as Mark was showing the growth and spending over time, um, a question that came up that seems kind of interesting is, so there's some markets where sports betting, advertising, gambling uh, is, um, you know, relatively mature. And of course, with recent um, legislative changes, more states are opening up and more jurisdictions are opening up. From your experience, Heather, is there a difference in, in sort of these more mature markets where this uh, advertising has been allowed versus the newly open markets? Any interesting patterns or any lessons to be learned? Um, yeah, I think there, 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 we're always learning lessons in regards to what the strategy should be and how the spend should be. Um, 
All I will say on that is we do look very closely as to when we're meeting our KPIs and we also look at conquesting and making sure that we're pulling some of that uh, share of voice from other competitors. So that really makes a play into how we're going to the market. Um, we, we, of course, have determined where our dollars need to be spent on a state-by-state -state basis based on all of those KPIs. So it doesn't necessarily mean that we'll be active in a market or in every um, market within a state if it doesn't make sense to where the end result is going. So it is something that we look at very, very closely. Sure, that makes sense, absolutely. And um, coming back to seasonality, um, I wanted to um, circle back to you, Mark. I think you had additional thought you wanted to offer on seasonality. Yeah, Rick, thank you. And thank you, Heather, for all your insight. That was, I'm just was stunned by how much uh, you guys have learned in the short years year or two about you this vertical is there the thing about seasonality that i wanted to mention is that some have argued that while there's a lot of advertising now going on with online gambling it's going to sort of dissipate a little bit because of um, the brand aware that people will be aware of FanDuel and DraftKings, etc and i just counter that argument with the nfl i i mean i just can't imagine I can't imagine, I mean an estimate, but of the amount of advertising surrounding the coming NFL uh, season, um, which actually will be one game longer this year, 17 regular season games, and, and how much online gambling um, services are going to focus their advertisements on probably existing clients to bet more on NFL. And I really do think there's going to be a real big push for um, big spending increases with the online gambling services surrounding the NFL season. All good points. Um, okay, well, let's move on. Um, we're getting to the end of our time here, and there's a couple more things that we wanted to just touch on quickly. Um, in the next slide, I mentioned we have a lot of questions we didn't um, have a chance to get to, so we will follow up with those separately by email. And just a couple of call-outs um, from, from Nielsen and, and BIA about ways to follow up uh, from things you've been hearing in this session. So, uh, Justin, let me flip this back to you. Yeah, just a really quick marketing plug. So all of the information that I presented in, in my sections on advertising spend for online gambling, as well as the Sports Better profile, come from two different Nielsen products, Nielsen Scarborough and Nielsen Ad Intel. And I, and I more or less explained what they are, but just one more time, Scarborough is a product that we deliver in 208 markets, and it gives really great in-depth information about individuals in those markets and um, the different consumer behaviors, media behaviors, anything you can think of in terms of what people watch and what people buy. And then Ad Intel is a product that measures ad spending across all the different mediums, also does this individually by market and by different mediums within markets. Um, so really good data there and, and perfect for this topic for sure. Definitely, yes. And Mark, you have a, a chance to say a couple of closing comments. And yeah, uh, learn more. next slide, please, Patrick. Um, and, and, um, I mentioned um, all the data we have here is in our uh, local market uh, forecast. We call it BIA Advantage, um, and we uh, provide that in 95 business categories. And that doesn't even include the online gambling where we're now providing information. So that fits into our overall consulting and intel competitive intelligence services. So as I mentioned, all the Advantage clients will soon get the individual market estimates for this new vertical. And with that, I'm, uh, I think we're done. Thank you so much, Mark. Uh, yes, here are ways to get in touch with BIA. Um, if you enjoyed this conference, there'll be a poll afterwards. Please let us know about that. And if you have other topics that you'd like us to cover in these webinars, let us know. Um, and Patrick, let me now turn the program back to you. Thank you so much, Rick. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. As Rick just mentioned on the way out, if you just do a quick uh, online survey for us, we'd really appreciate it. So.